Rosalind Franklin, 1920 1958, was a British chemist who made significant contributions to the field of molecular biology, particularly in the study of DNA structure. Despite her short career and untimely death at the age of 37 due to ovarian cancer, Franklin's work has had a lasting impact on the scientific community. Franklin was born in London, England to a wealthy Jewish family. Her father was a merchant banker and her mother was a member of the Royal Society of Chemistry. Growing up, Franklin showed an early interest in science and received a scholarship to attend St. Paul's Girls School, one of the best schools for girls in London. She went on to study at Newnham College, Cambridge, where she earned a degree in natural sciences in 1941. After completing her degree, Franklin worked as a research assistant at the British Coal Utilization Research Association, where she studied the structure of coal and the mechanisms of carbonization. In 1947, she moved to Paris to work at the Laboratoire Central des Services Chimique de l'État, where she studied the structure of viruses using X ray crystallography. In 1951, Franklin returned to England to work at King's College, London, where she began studying the structure of DNA. At the time, there was much debate among scientists about the structure of DNA, with some researchers proposing a helical structure and others suggesting a more linear structure. Using X-ray crystallography, Franklin was able to produce high-quality images of DNA fibers that showed a clear helical structure. Franklin's work on DNA structure was instrumental in the discovery of the double helix by James Watson and Francis Crick. In 1952, Watson and Crick used Franklin's data, along with data from other researchers, to propose the double helix structure of DNA. However, Franklin's contribution to the discovery of the double helix was not recognized at the time and she was not included in the Nobel Prize. Awarded to Watson, Crick, and Maurice Wilkins in 1962. In addition to her work on DNA, Franklin also made significant contributions to the study of RNA viruses, including the tobacco mosaic virus. She also worked on the structure of graphite and other carbon compounds. Franklin's career was cut short by her death from ovarian cancer in 1958. However, her work has had a lasting impact on the scientific community. In recent years, there has been increased recognition of Franklin's contributions to the discovery of the double helix and many scientists and historians of science have called for her to be given greater credit for her work. Despite her contributions, Franklin faced numerous challenges in her career due to gender discrimination. She was often excluded from meetings and discussions related to her research, and her male colleagues sometimes took credit for her work. Additionally, Franklin's assertive personality and focus on scientific data instead of theoretical speculation were viewed as difficult by some of her colleagues. In recent years, there has been increased recognition of Franklin's contributions to science, and she has been celebrated as a role model for women in science. In 2004, Franklin was honored by the Royal Society of London with a special exhibition titled Rosalind Franklin, a crucial contribution which highlighted her work on DNA and other scientific achievements. In 2013, a memorial sculpture of Franklin was unveiled at the University of Leicester, where she earned her Ph.D. Franklin's legacy continues to inspire scientists today, 
particularly women in science who continue to face gender-based discrimination and bias. Her contributions to the discovery of the double helix and her groundbreaking work in the study of viruses and carbon compounds have had a lasting impact on the field of molecular biology and will continue to influence scientific research for years to come. Furthermore, Franklin's work has also been recognized in popular culture. Her story was portrayed in the 1987 play Photograph 51 by Anna Ziegler, which was later adapted into a television play starring Nicole Kidman as Franklin. The play and television adaptation brought Franklin's story to a wider audience and helped to raise awareness about the challenges faced by women in science. In addition to her scientific achievements, Franklin was also known for her love of hiking and climbing. She was an accomplished mountaineer and made several climbing expeditions in Switzerland and Norway. Her love of the outdoors and physical activity was seen as unusual for a woman in her time and it further contributed to her reputation as a unique and independent individual. In conclusion, Rosalind Franklin was a pioneering chemist whose contributions to the study of molecular biology have had a lasting impact on the scientific community. Despite facing numerous challenges and discrimination during her career, Franklin's determination and dedication to scientific research enabled her to make groundbreaking discoveries in the study of DNA and viruses. Her Legacy continues to inspire scientists today, particularly women in science. And her story serves as a reminder of the importance of recognizing and valuing the contributions of all scientists, regardless of their gender or background. It is important to note that Franklin's contribution to the discovery of the double helix structure of DNA was not fully recognized until after her death. This was due, in part, to the sexism and discrimination she faced during her career. Franklin's colleague, Maurice Wilkins, shared her research with James Watson and Francis Crick without her knowledge or consent, which allowed them to develop their model of the double helix structure. However, Franklin's work played a crucial role in the discovery and Watson and Crick themselves acknowledged the importance of her findings. In recent years, there has been increased recognition of Franklin's contributions, and she has become a symbol of the struggle for gender equality in science. Her story highlights the importance of creating more opportunities for women in science and ensuring that their contributions are fully recognized and valued. In addition to her scientific achievements, Franklin was also a respected mentor and teacher. She inspired many young scientists during her career and her dedication to her research and her strong personality made her a role model for women in science. Her legacy continues to inspire young scientists today and her story serves as a reminder of the power of determination hard work, and perseverance in the face of adversity. In recent years, efforts have been made to honor Franklin's memory and celebrate her achievements. In 2015, a blue plaque was unveiled at her former home in London, recognizing her as a pioneer in the study of DNA. In addition, a new research institute named the Franklin Wilkins Building was opened in 2016 at King's College London, where Franklin conducted her research on DNA. In conclusion, Rosalind Franklin was a brilliant and pioneering scientist whose contributions to the study of DNA and viruses have had a lasting impact on the field of molecular biology. 
despite facing numerous challenges and discrimination during her career, she remained dedicated to her research and helped to lay the foundation for some of the most important discoveries of the 20th century. Her story serves as a reminder of the importance of recognizing and valuing the contributions of all scientists and the need to continue to strive for greater gender equality in science. John Dalton was a renowned chemist, physicist, and meteorologist who made groundbreaking contributions to our understanding of the natural world. Born in England in the late 18th century, Dalton's work on atomic theory and color blindness revolutionized the field of chemistry and paved the way for modern science. Despite facing numerous challenges and setbacks throughout his life, Dalton remained dedicated to his work and his contributions to science continue to be celebrated and admired to this day. Let us delve into the life and career of John Dalton and explore the remarkable legacy that he left behind. John Dalton was an English chemist, physicist, and meteorologist who is widely regarded as one of the founders of modern chemistry. He was born on September 6, 1766, in Eaglesfield, a small village in Cumberland, England. Dalton was the son of a weaver, and his family was relatively poor. Despite his humble beginnings, Dalton was a gifted student and showed an early aptitude for science and mathematics. He began teaching at a young age and eventually became a private tutor in Manchester, where he spent most of his adult life. Dalton's career in science began in earnest in the late 18th century when he became interested in the properties of gases. He conducted a series of experiments on the properties of various gases, including carbon dioxide and hydrogen, and developed a theory that the pressure of a gas was proportional to its temperature and volume. In 1803, Dalton published his most significant work, A New System of Chemical Philosophy, in which he proposed the atomic theory of matter. According to this theory, all matter is made up of tiny, indivisible particles called atoms, which have specific properties and can combine to form molecules. Dalton's atomic theory was a groundbreaking discovery and laid the foundation for modern chemistry. In addition to his work on atomic theory, Dalton also made significant contributions to the study of color blindness, which he himself suffered from. He conducted a series of experiments on the subject and proposed a theory that color blindness was caused by the absence of specific types of cones in the eye. Dalton's career in science was not without its challenges, however. He was often criticized by his contemporaries, who were skeptical of his theories and methods. Despite this, Dalton remained committed to his work and continued to make significant contributions to the field throughout his life. John Dalton died on July 27, 1844, in Manchester, England, at the age of 77. He is remembered today as one of the greatest scientists in history and as a pioneer of modern chemistry. His contributions to the field have had a lasting impact on our understanding of the natural world, and his legacy continues to inspire generations of scientists around the world. Throughout his career, John Dalton received numerous accolades and honors for his contributions to science. In 1822, he was elected a member of the prestigious Royal Society of London, and he was awarded the Society's highest honor, the Copley Medal, in 1826. Dalton was also a founding member of the Manchester Literary and Philosophical Society and served as its president from 1817 to 1844. In addition to his scientific work, Dalton was deeply committed to education and spent much of his career as a teacher and lecturer. He was a highly respected and influential figure in the academic community, and his lectures on chemistry and physics drew large crowds. Dalton's impact on science and society extended far beyond his own lifetime. 
His atomic theory formed the basis for many subsequent discoveries in chemistry, and his work on color blindness helped to advance our understanding of vision and perception. Today, Dalton is remembered as a pioneering scientist and a trailblazer in the field of chemistry. In recognition of his many achievements, numerous institutions and landmarks have been named in honor of John Dalton. The Dalton School, a private school in New York City, and Dalton State College in Georgia, are both named after him, as is the Dalton Crater on the Moon. In conclusion, John Dalton was a highly accomplished scientist and educator whose contributions to the field of chemistry have had a lasting impact on our understanding of the natural world. His work on atomic theory and color blindness continued to inspire new discoveries in science and medicine, and his legacy continues to be celebrated by scholars and scientists around the world. Despite his many achievements, John Dalton faced numerous challenges and setbacks throughout his career. He struggled with poor health and financial difficulties throughout much of his life, and his work was often met with skepticism and criticism from his peers. Despite these challenges, Dalton remained committed to his work and continued to pursue his scientific interests with passion and dedication. He was known for his tireless work ethic and his willingness to push the boundaries of scientific knowledge, and his contributions to the field of chemistry have had a lasting impact on our understanding of the natural world. Today, Dalton is remembered as a pioneering figure in the field of chemistry and as one of the greatest scientists of the 19th century. His legacy continues to inspire new generations of scientists, and his impact on the world of science and academia is still felt today. In recognition of his many achievements, John Dalton was awarded numerous honors and awards throughout his lifetime. He was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1822 and was awarded the prestigious Copley Medal in 1826. He was also awarded honorary degrees from the University of Oxford and the University of Edinburgh, and his contributions to science were recognized by institutions around the world. In the years since his death, John Dalton's contributions to science have only grown in importance and significance. His work on atomic theory, in particular, has had a profound impact on our understanding of the nature of matter. And his legacy continues to inspire new discoveries in fields ranging from chemistry and physics to biology and medicine. In addition to his scientific and academic achievements, John Dalton was also known for his personal qualities and values. He was deeply committed to his faith and was an active member of the Quaker community throughout his life. He was also known for his humility, generosity, and kindness, and was widely respected and admired by his peers and colleagues. Despite his many accomplishments, John Dalton never lost sight of the importance of hard work, perseverance, and dedication. He believed that scientific progress could only be achieved through careful observation and experimentation. And he devoted his life to advancing our understanding of the natural world through these principles. Today, John Dalton's legacy continues to inspire new generations of scientists and researchers, and his contributions too. The field of chemistry are still felt in laboratories and classrooms around the world. His life and career serve as a testament to the power of scientific curiosity and the potential for discovery that lies within all of us. In conclusion, John Dalton was a remarkable scientist, educator, and humanitarian whose life and work continue to inspire and inform our understanding of the world around us. His pioneering work on atomic theory and color blindness laid the foundation for modern chemistry and ophthalmology and his commitment to scientific inquiry and discovery serves as a shining example to all who seek to push the boundaries of human knowledge. Louis Pasteur was a renowned French scientist and chemist, known for his groundbreaking discoveries in microbiology and immunology. Born on December 27, 1822, in Dole, France, 
Pasteur grew up in a Catholic family and showed a strong interest in science from a young age. After studying at the École Normale Supérieure in Paris, Pasteur went on to conduct groundbreaking research in the fields of fermentation and germ theory. His experiments showed that microorganisms were responsible for the spoilage of food and beverages, and he developed methods for pasteurization to kill these microorganisms. Pasteur also made significant contributions to the development of vaccines, including the rabies vaccine. His work on germ theory and vaccines laid the foundation for modern immunology and revolutionized the field of medicine. In addition to his scientific achievements, Pasteur was also a prolific writer and public figure, and he played an important role in shaping the scientific community in France. He founded the Pasteur Institute in Paris in 1887, which remains a leading research institution to this day. Pasteur died on September 28, 1895, in Marne-la-Coquette, France, but his legacy continues to inspire scientists and researchers around the world. He is widely regarded as one of the most influential scientists in history, and his work has had a profound impact on our understanding of the natural world and on the practice of medicine. Louis Pasteur's career can be divided into several key stages, each of which saw significant breakthroughs in his scientific research. 1. Early career and studies Louis Pasteur began his scientific career studying crystals and minerals, and he quickly gained recognition for his work in this area. In 1847, he became a professor of chemistry at the University of Strasbourg, where he conducted research on fermentation and the chemical properties of alcohol. 2. Fermentation research In the mid-1850s, Pasteur turned his attention to the process of fermentation, which he believed was caused by the growth of microorganisms. He conducted a series of experiments on beer and wine, and his research led him to develop the process of pasteurization, which involves heating a substance to kill microorganisms that could cause spoilage or disease. 3. Germ theory Pasteur's work on fermentation led him to develop his famous germ theory, which proposed that microorganisms were responsible for the spread of disease. He conducted experiments to prove this theory, and his research laid the foundation for modern microbiology and immunology. 4. Vaccine development In the 1870s, Pasteur turned his attention to the development of vaccines, and he made significant progress in this area. He developed the first successful vaccine against anthrax, and later developed vaccines for rabies and other diseases. 5. Public figure and legacy In addition to his scientific work, Pasteur was also a prominent public figure in France, and he played an important role in shaping the scientific community. He founded the Pasteur Institute in Paris in 1887, which remains a leading research institution today. Pasteur died in 1895, but his legacy continues to inspire scientists and researchers around the world. His work has had a profound impact on our understanding of the natural world and on the practice of medicine. Louis Pasteur made numerous groundbreaking discoveries in the field of chemistry throughout his career. Here are some of his most notable contributions. 1. Crystallography Early in his career, Pasteur studied crystallography, the study of the structure of crystals, His research on the asymmetry of crystals led him to propose that living organisms were made up of asymmetrical molecules. 
This theory later became known as Pasteur's law of molecular asymmetry. 2. Fermentation Pasteur's research on fermentation was a significant contribution to the field of chemistry. He showed that microorganisms were responsible for the fermentation process and developed pasteurization as a method to prevent spoilage of wine and other beverages. 3. Optics Pasteur's work in optics led to the discovery of polarization, the process by which light waves vibrate in a single plane. He discovered that some substances, such as sugar and tartaric acid, rotated the plane of polarized light, which later became known as Pasteur's discovery of molecular asymmetry. 4. Stereochemistry Pasteur's work in stereochemistry, the study of the spatial arrangement of atoms in molecules, was revolutionary. He discovered that certain chemical compounds existed in two different forms, which he called isomers. His research on the separation of isomers led to the development of new methods for chemical analysis. 5. Vaccines Pasteur's development of vaccines for rabies and other diseases was a significant achievement in the field of immunology. He demonstrated that weakened or dead microbes could be used to stimulate the body's immune system to fight disease, a concept that remains the basis of modern vaccination. Overall, Louis Pasteur's contributions to the field of chemistry were numerous and far-reaching and his work laid the foundation for many advances in the field of medicine and biology. In his chemistry career, Louis Pasteur encountered many significant difficulties and challenges. Here are some of the most notable obstacles he faced. 1. Skepticism from the scientific community Pasteur's germ theory and his work on vaccines were initially met with skepticism and resistance from many in the scientific community. Some of his peers argued that germs could not be the cause of disease, and others were hesitant to accept the idea of vaccination. 2. Financial struggles at various points in his career Pasteur faced financial difficulties, and he often had to rely on the support of wealthy patrons or the government to fund his research. This was especially true during his early years as a professor at the University of Lille, where he struggled to obtain funding for his research on fermentation. 3. Personal tragedy Pasteur experienced personal tragedy when his three daughters died from typhoid fever in the early 1860s. This loss deeply affected him and may have influenced his subsequent research on the prevention and treatment of infectious diseases. Despite these challenges, Pasteur persevered in his work and made numerous groundbreaking discoveries that have had a profound impact on the field of chemistry and on society as a whole. His dedication to his research and his determination to overcome obstacles helped him to become one of the most influential scientists of all time. Marie Curie was born Maria Salomea Sklodowska in Warsaw, Poland in 1867. She was the youngest of five children, and her parents were both teachers. Her mother died when Marie was just 10 years old, and her father lost his job and struggled to make ends meet. Despite these challenges, Marie was a top student in her school and showed a keen interest in science from a young age. In 1891, Marie moved to Paris to study physics, chemistry, and mathematics at the Sorbonne University. She faced many challenges as a woman in a male-dominated field, 
but she was determined to succeed. She lived a frugal life, often surviving on just bread and tea, in order to afford her education. In 1894, Marie met Pierre Curie, a fellow scientist, and the two fell in love. They were married the following year and had two daughters together, Irene and Eve. Marie's research on radioactivity led her to discover two new elements, polonium and radium. She coined the term radioactivity to describe the emission of particles and energy from atoms. In 1903, Marie and Pierre were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for their work on radioactivity. Marie was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize, and she and Pierre were the first couple to win a Nobel Prize together. Tragically, Pierre died in a traffic accident in 1906. Marie was devastated, but she continued their work on radioactivity. In 1911, she was awarded a second Nobel Prize, this time in chemistry, for her discovery and isolation of pure radium. During World War I, Marie Curie developed mobile X-ray units to help diagnose injured soldiers on the battlefield. She trained other women to operate the X-ray machines and provided them with the necessary equipment. This work earned her the nickname the Mother of Modern Physics. In her later years, Marie suffered from health problems due to her exposure to radiation. She died in 1934 at the age of 66 from aplastic anemia, a blood disorder caused by exposure to high levels of radiation. Marie Curie's legacy continues to inspire generations of scientists. Her passion for science, her dedication to her work, and her determination to succeed despite numerous obstacles have made her an icon in the world of science. Marie Curie was not only a groundbreaking scientist, but also a pioneer for women's rights. She faced numerous obstacles as a woman in the male-dominated field of science, but she refused to let these challenges hold her back. She believed that women were just as capable as men and worked tirelessly to prove this to the world. Marie was a strong advocate for education, particularly for women. She believed that education was the key to empowerment and that every person, regardless of their gender, should have access to it. She often spoke publicly about the importance of education and encouraged women to pursue careers in science. Marie was also a fierce critic of war. She witnessed firsthand the devastating effects of World War I and was horrified by the destruction and loss of life. She believed that science should be used for the betterment of humanity, not for the destruction of it. In addition to her scientific achievements, Marie was also a devoted mother. She balanced her work in the laboratory with her responsibilities as a parent, often working late into the night after her children had gone to bed. She was deeply committed to her family and took great pride in her daughter's accomplishments. Despite her many accomplishments, Marie faced criticism and discrimination throughout her life. She was often ridiculed for being a woman in a field dominated by men, and some even questioned the validity of her research because of her gender. However, 
she refused to be deterred by these criticisms and continued to push forward with her work. Marie's legacy continues to inspire scientists and women around the world. She proved that women are just as capable as men in the field of science, and her dedication to education and the betterment of humanity serves as a model for us all. Her groundbreaking research on radioactivity paved the way for countless scientific discoveries and her commitment to social justice and human rights continues to inspire people today. In addition to her work in physics, Marie Curie also made significant contributions to the field of chemistry. Her discovery and isolation of pure radium not only advanced the understanding of radioactivity, but also had practical applications in medicine. Marie's work on radioactivity led her to investigate the properties of other radioactive elements. She discovered that radium emitted a gas, which she named radon, that had similar properties to the inert gas helium. She also discovered that radium had a half-life of 1,600 years, which meant that it decayed slowly over time. Marie's work on radium and radioactivity revolutionized the field of medicine. She realized that the energy emitted by radioactive materials could be used to destroy cancer cells, and she developed the first radiation therapy for cancer patients. This technique, known as radium therapy, was used to treat thousands of cancer patients before the development of chemotherapy. Marie's research also had implications for the understanding of atomic structure. Her discovery of the properties of radium and other radioactive elements helped to challenge the prevailing model of the atom at the time, known as the plum pudding model. This model suggested that the atom was made up of a uniform distribution of positive and negative charges, but Marie's work showed that the atom was much more complex than previously thought. Marie's contributions to chemistry and physics earned her numerous accolades throughout her life, including the Nobel Prizes in Physics and Chemistry, as well as the Davy Medal from the Royal Society. She was also the first woman to be appointed as a professor at the Sorbonne University. Marie Curie's work on radioactivity and her pioneering research in chemistry and physics continue to inspire scientists today. Her legacy serves as a testament to the power of perseverance, dedication, and hard work in the pursuit of knowledge and discovery. Marie Curie led an extraordinary life, filled with groundbreaking scientific discoveries and a relentless pursuit of knowledge. Here are some of the key events that defined her life. Middle. Born in Poland in 1867, Marie Curie grew up in a family of educators and was encouraged to pursue her education. Middle. In 1891, she left Poland for Paris to continue her studies in physics and mathematics at the Sorbonne University. Middle. In 1895, Marie married Pierre Curie a fellow scientist who shared her passion for physics and chemistry. Alfred Bernhardt Nobel was a Swedish chemist, engineer, inventor, and businessman. He was born on October 21, 1833, in Stockholm, Sweden, to Emanuel Nobel and his wife, Andrietta Alsell Nobel. Alfred Nobel was the third of four children in his family. His father was an inventor and engineer who had a factory that produced armaments, including torpedoes and mines. Nobel Received his early education from private tutors and was fluent in several languages by the time he was a teenager. He showed a keen interest in science and engineering, 
and by the age of 18, he had already filed his first patent. For a gas meter. He attended the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm and later went to the University of Paris to study chemistry. He also traveled extensively throughout Europe and the United States, meeting with other scientists and learning about their work. In the 1860s, Nobel began to focus his research on explosives, and in 1867, he invented dynamite. This invention revolutionized the construction and mining industries by providing a safer and more efficient means of excavation. Nobel continued to experiment with explosives and developed other products, including blasting, gelatin and smokeless gunpowder. Nobel was a prolific inventor and held over 350 patents during his lifetime. In addition to his work in explosives, he also conducted research in several other areas, including synthetic rubber, synthetic silk, and artificial leather. He also invented the ballistite, a smokeless propellant that was used in firearms and artillery. Despite his success as an inventor and businessman, Nobel was deeply affected by the destructive nature of his inventions. He became increasingly concerned with the use of his products in war and began to explore ways to promote peace. In 1888, he wrote a will that bequeath most of his fortune to establish the Nobel Prizes, which were to be awarded annually to individuals who had made significant contributions to the fields of physics, chemistry, medicine, literature, and peace. Nobel died on December 10, 1896, in San Remo, Italy. His will was executed, and the first Nobel Prizes were awarded in 1901. Today, the Nobel Prizes are considered the most prestigious awards in their respective fields and have been awarded to many of the world's most accomplished scientists, writers, and peace activists. Following Alfred Nobel's death, his will specified that the bulk of his fortune was to be invested and the interest used to fund the Nobel Prizes. The Nobel Foundation was established to manage this fund and to oversee the selection of prize recipients. The first Nobel Prizes were awarded in 1901, five years after Nobel's death. Since then, the Nobel Prizes have been awarded annually to individuals who have made significant contributions to their respective fields. The Nobel Prizes for Physics, Chemistry, and Physiology or Medicine are awarded by the Swedish Academy of Sciences, while the Nobel Prize in Literature is awarded by the Swedish Academy, and the Nobel Peace Prize is awarded by the Norwegian Nobel Committee. Over the years, the Nobel Prizes have recognized some of the most significant achievements in science, literature, and peace activism. Among the most notable recipients of the Nobel Prizes are Marie Curie, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1903, and the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1911 for her pioneering work in radioactivity, Albert Einstein, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921 for his contributions to theoretical physics, including his theory of relativity, and Martin Luther King Jr., who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964 for his work in advancing civil rights and promoting nonviolent resistance. Nobel's legacy also extends to his contributions to the development of explosives, which have had a significant impact on industry and warfare. Dynamite, in particular, revolutionized the construction and mining industries and was 
instrumental in the development of infrastructure in many parts of the world. However, Nobel was also keenly aware of the destructive potential of his inventions, and his concern for the impact of explosives on human life inspired him to establish the Nobel Prizes as a means of promoting peace and progress. In addition to his contributions to science and the establishment of the Nobel Prizes, Nobel was also an accomplished linguist and writer. He spoke several languages fluently and was a prolific writer of poetry and prose. His literary works include poetry, plays, and novels, and his writing reflects his interest in social and political issues. Nobel's literary achievements were recognized in 1901 when he was awarded the Swedish Academy's Gold Medal for Literature. Alfred Nobel was a multi-talented individual who made significant contributions to science, literature, and peace activism. His invention of dynamite revolutionized industry and infrastructure development, while his concern for the impact of explosives on human life inspired him to establish the Nobel Prizes. Today, Nobel's legacy lives on through the recognition of individuals who have made significant contributions to the betterment of humanity through the Nobel Prizes. The impact of Nobel's legacy is also evident in the continued growth and development of the Nobel Prizes. In addition to the five original categories, the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences was established in 1968. And it is awarded to individuals who have made significant contributions to the field of economics. This prize was not established by Nobel himself but was created by the Swedish Central Bank in honor of his legacy. The Nobel Prizes have become a symbol of excellence in their respective fields and are highly coveted by scientists, writers, and peace activists worldwide. The prizes have also had a significant impact on public awareness of science and research, encouraging new generations of scientists and researchers to pursue careers in these fields. In addition to his scientific and humanitarian achievements, Nobel was also a successful businessman. He established several companies throughout his life, including the Bofors Company, which produced armaments and military equipment. The Bofors Company became one of the largest arms manufacturers in the world and was later acquired by Saab Ab. Nobel never married and had no children. He remained a private individual throughout his life, rarely speaking publicly about his personal life or his motivations for his scientific and philanthropic work. Despite this, his contributions to science and society have had a profound impact on the world and continue to inspire future generations. In conclusion, Alfred Nobel was a multi-talented individual who made significant contributions to science, literature, and peace activism. His invention of dynamite revolutionized industry and infrastructure development, while his concern for the impact of explosives on human life inspired him to establish the Nobel Prizes. Today, Nobel's legacy lives on through the recognition of individuals who have made significant contributions to the betterment of humanity through the Nobel Prizes. His invention of dynamite revolutionized industry, while his concern for the impact of explosives on human life inspired him to establish the Nobel Prizes. His legacy continues to inspire future generations, and his contributions to science, literature, and philanthropy are remembered and celebrated around the world. Top of form. Mario Molina was a chemist who made significant contributions to the field of atmospheric chemistry. He was born in Mexico City in 1943 and received his education both in Mexico and the United States. 
Molina's career spanned several decades, and he made many important discoveries and breakthroughs during that time. Mario Molina was a prominent chemist who made significant contributions to the field of atmospheric chemistry. Born on March 19, 1943, in Mexico City, Molina was interested in science from a young age. He studied chemical engineering at the National Autonomous University of Mexico and then pursued graduate studies in physical chemistry at the University of Freiburg in Germany. In the late 1960s, Molina moved to the United States to attend the University of California, Berkeley, where he earned his Ph.D. In Physical Chemistry in 1972 After completing his doctoral studies, he joined the faculty at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, where he conducted groundbreaking research on the chemistry of the Earth's atmosphere. Molina's research focused on the ways in which human activity was impacting the ozone layer in the Earth's atmosphere. In the early 1970s, he and his research partner, F. Sherwood Rowland, discovered that chlorofluorocarbons, CFCS, which were commonly used in refrigerants, aerosol sprays, and other products, were depleting the ozone layer. Their research had a profound impact on the scientific community and helped to galvanize efforts to address the problem of ozone depletion. In recognition of their work, Molina and Rowland were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1995. Throughout his career, Molina was a passionate advocate for environmental protection and worked tirelessly to raise awareness of the dangers posed by climate change and other environmental issues. He served as a scientific advisor to numerous organizations, including the United Nations and the Environmental Protection Agency, and was a vocal advocate for policies that would protect the environment and promote sustainability. Molina's contributions to the field of atmospheric chemistry and his lifelong dedication to environmental protection continue to be celebrated and admired to this day. His legacy serves as a reminder of the power of scientific inquiry and the importance of using our knowledge to make the world a better place. In addition to his groundbreaking research on atmospheric chemistry, Mario Molina was also known for his work on a wide range of environmental issues. He was a vocal advocate for sustainable development and worked to raise awareness of the dangers posed by air pollution, deforestation, and other environmental challenges. Throughout his career, Molina was also committed to promoting science education and encouraging young people to pursue careers in science and engineering. He was a mentor to many young scientists and played an active role in numerous educational programs and initiatives designed to promote scientific literacy and inspire the next generation of innovators. In recognition of his contributions to science and environmental advocacy, Molina received numerous awards and honors throughout his career, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor, in 2013. Molina passed away on October 7, 2020, at the age of 77. However, his legacy lives on, and his contributions to the field of atmospheric chemistry and environmental advocacy continue to inspire and inform scientists, policymakers, and activists around the world. Mario Molina's life and career serve as a powerful reminder of the importance of scientific inquiry. Environmental protection, and public service, and his contributions to the world of science and academia will continue to be celebrated and admired for generations to come. Mario Molina's legacy also extends beyond the scientific community. 
He was a role model for many, particularly in the Latino community, and his life and work have served as a source of inspiration for generations of aspiring scientists and activists. Throughout his career, Molina remained committed to promoting social justice and addressing issues of inequality and discrimination. He was a vocal advocate for diversity and inclusion in the sciences, and he worked tirelessly to break down barriers and create opportunities for underrepresented groups. Molina's impact on the world of science and environmental advocacy has been enormous, and his legacy serves as a reminder of the power of scientific inquiry to affect positive change in the world. His contributions have had a lasting impact on our understanding of the natural world. And his dedication to environmental protection and public service continue to inspire and inform scientists, policymakers, and activists around the globe. In many ways, Mario Molina embodied the ideals of a true scientist, curiosity, dedication, and a commitment to using knowledge to make the world a better place. His life and work stand as a testament to the transformative power of scientific inquiry. And his contributions to the field of atmospheric chemistry and environmental advocacy will continue to be celebrated and remembered for generations to come. Mario Molina was a prominent chemist who made significant contributions to the study of atmospheric chemistry and was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1995 for his work on the formation and decomposition of ozone in the atmosphere. Here are some of the prominent events in his career. 1. Molina was born on March 19, 1943, in Mexico City, Mexico. He studied chemical engineering at the National Autonomous University of Mexico before moving to the United States to pursue graduate studies in physical chemistry. 2. In the 1970s, Molina, along with his research partner F. Sherwood Rowland, conducted groundbreaking research on the impact of human-made chlorofluorocarbons, CFCS, on the ozone layer in the Earth's atmosphere. 3. In 1974, Molina and Rowland published a paper in the journal Nature which described how CFCS could catalyze the breakdown of ozone in the upper atmosphere. This paper raised global awareness of the threat posed by CFCS to the Earth's ozone layer. 4. Molina and Rowland's research eventually led to the signing of the Montreal Protocol in 1987. An international treaty which aimed to phase out the production and use of CFCS and other ozone-depleting substances. 5. In 1982, Molina joined the faculty of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, where he continued his research on atmospheric chemistry and air pollution. 6. In 1995, Molina was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, along with Roland and Dutch chemist Paul Crutzen, for their work on atmospheric chemistry and the depletion of the ozone layer. 7. Michael Faraday was an English chemist and physicist who is widely considered one of the most influential scientists of the 19th century. He was born on September 22, 1791, in Newington Butts, Surrey, England, to a poor family. His father was a blacksmith, and Faraday received only a basic education before being apprenticed to a local bookbinder at the age of 14. Faraday's interest in science was sparked by the books he bound, and he soon began attending lectures by the eminent chemist Humphrey Davy at the Royal Institution in London. Faraday was eventually hired as Davy's assistant, 
and he quickly proved to be a talented experimentalist and theorist. In 1825, Faraday discovered benzene, a simple hydrocarbon that is the basis of many organic compounds. He also discovered that an electric current could induce a magnetic field, leading to the development of the first electric motor. Faraday's work on electromagnetic induction laid the foundation for the development of the electric generator and the transformer, and he is often referred to as the father of electrical engineering. Faraday's work on electrolysis led to the discovery of several new elements, including chlorine, sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium. He also developed the laws of electrolysis, which describe the relationship between the amount of electricity used and the amount of substance produced during an electrolytic reaction. Faraday's contributions to science earned him numerous honors and awards, including the Royal Society's Copley Medal in 1832 and the Rumford Medal in 1846. He was also elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1824 and served as its president from 1858 to 1860. Faraday's career was marked by a deep commitment to education and public outreach. He gave a series of lectures at the Royal Institution that were immensely popular, and he was known for his ability to explain complex scientific concepts in a clear and accessible way. Faraday's passion for science and his dedication to sharing it with others inspired countless scientists and laypeople alike. In addition to his scientific work, Faraday was also a devout Christian and a member of the Sandemanian Church. He believed that science and religion were complementary, and he saw his work as a way to explore the wonders of God's creation. Faraday died on August 25, 1867, at the age of 75. His contributions to science continue to be celebrated to this day, and he remains an inspiration to scientists, educators, and people of all walks of life who are curious about the world around them. Faraday's legacy as a scientist and educator is also evident in the institutions that bear his name. The Faraday Institute for Science and Religion at the University of Cambridge promotes dialogue between scientists and theologians, and the Faraday Museum at the Royal Institution showcases his groundbreaking experiments and inventions. Faraday's influence on science and technology is also reflected in the many applications of his work. His laws of electrolysis are still used in the production of metals, and his work on electromagnetic induction is the basis of modern power generation and distribution. His discoveries have also contributed to the development of modern technologies such as batteries, motors, and transformers. Despite his numerous achievements, Faraday remained humble and dedicated to his work throughout his life. His passion for science and his commitment to education continue to inspire scientists and educators around the world. In the words of Faraday himself, nothing is too wonderful to be true, if it be consistent with the laws of nature. Faraday's lifelong pursuit of knowledge and his deep respect for the natural world serve as a reminder of the power of scientific inquiry and the importance of curiosity, creativity, and perseverance in the pursuit of truth. Faraday's influence also extended beyond his scientific work. He was a staunch advocate for scientific education, believing that science should be accessible to all. He worked to establish science education programs for children and adults, and he emphasized the importance of hands-on experimentation and observation and learning. Faraday's commitment to science education is also reflected in his famous Christmas lectures, 
which he delivered at the Royal Institution between 1825 and 1860. These lectures were designed to engage children and adults alike in scientific topics, and they continue to be a popular tradition to this day. Faraday's personal life was marked by a strong sense of duty and responsibility. He was a devoted husband and father, and he cared for his elderly mother until her death. He was also known for his integrity and humility, and he refused numerous honors and titles that he felt were not deserved. Faraday's work and legacy continued to inspire scientists and educators around the world. His groundbreaking discoveries and his dedication to science education serve as a reminder of the importance of curiosity, creativity, and perseverance in the pursuit of knowledge. As he once said, work, finish, publish. Faraday's dedication to the scientific method and his tireless work ethic continue to serve as a model for scientists and scholars everywhere. In addition to his scientific and educational work, Faraday was also a devoted family man. He married Sarah Barnard in 1821, and they had two children together. Faraday was known for his humility and his kindness, and he was deeply respected by his colleagues and friends. Faraday's contributions to science and education have been widely recognized over the years. He was knighted in 1847 and awarded the Albert Medal by the Royal Society of Arts in 1866. He was also a Fellow of the Royal Society and served as its President from 1858 to 1860. Faraday's legacy continues to influence scientific research and education to this day. His work on electricity and magnetism paved the way for modern technologies such as the electric motor, generator, and transformer. His laws of electrolysis are still used in the production of metals, and his work on gas laws. And the behavior of gases under pressure laid the foundation for the development of the field of physical chemistry. Perhaps most importantly, Faraday's commitment to scientific education and public outreach has inspired generations of scientists and educators. His famous Christmas lectures at the Royal Institution continue to captivate audiences of all ages. And his emphasis on hands-on experimentation and observation remains a cornerstone of science education. In the words of Faraday himself, the important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. Faraday's insatiable curiosity and his unwavering dedication to the pursuit of knowledge continue to inspire scientists and scholars around the world. His legacy serves as a reminder of the power of scientific inquiry and the importance of sharing knowledge and information with others.